I'd like to begin by acknowledging that Queen's University is on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee people, um, and as well as the, um, sorry, as well as the Huron Wendat, and um, that our people have been here since time immemorial. This land today is still governed by the Dutch One Spoon Treaty that um, every day informs how we interact with each other and how we support each other in ensuring that our languages and cultures continue to thrive here. We have truly enjoyed learning about Indigenous education from our colleagues from around the world, including Dr. Sean Wilson from Australia, uh, originally hails from Canada, Dr. Tangoi Revy from New Zealand, Dr. Vanessa Rast, also from Australia, and Dr. Pablo Fuentes from Chile. It's my great pleasure to introduce to you Sandra Nisteraka, who is joining us today from Norway. Sandra is a PhD candidate and a professor at Nord University in Bode, and she is currently undertaking a PhD on Lule Same second language education. Um, she was previously in charge of the Lule Same section for the Lule Same teacher education program at Nord. Uh, she's from Div Tasvodna, um, Tisfjord, which is the center of the Lule Same language region uh, on the Norwegian side of the border. So it's very exciting to me as a fellow language lover. Um, during her presentation today, Sandra will answer such questions as how do we indigenize education? How do we ensure that students learn about indigenous languages, cultures, traditions, and knowledges? How do we ensure that indigenous students receive an education that represents their indigenous background, culture, and traditions? I very much look forward to hearing how in Norway, indigenizing education refers to both education about and for Sami, um, as that's a sentiment that we're embracing here in the faculty as well. So, Kachimi Gwetch Sandra, thank you for joining us here today. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Um, it's very nice to be here. I'm very excited to be able to talk to you about the Indigenous education and how we, uh, how we try to indigenize education in Sápmi and in Norway. Let me share my screen with you. There, and now just double check. Now you see the PowerPoint themselves, itself. Yes, the center you can here. see it, Sandra. Yes, thank you. Okay, Mon Sagsadigi Norda Universitetes, mainly Opobike Gotakin, Sami Etnamin, Julia, Bidum, Ubmemia, Wadir Samin. So I am speaking to you today from Nord University, which has campuses situated in the heart of Sapmia, the Sami region and in the geographical area of five Sami languages, Lule, Pite, Ume, and South Sami. Uh, today's topic is indigenizing education. Uh, questions I will talk about today are the ones uh, Lindsay already mentioned. How do we indigenize education? How do we ensure that students learn about indigenous languages, cultures, traditions, and knowledges? And maybe most important, how do we ensure that indigenous students receive an education that represents their, their indigenous background, culture, and traditions. Um, I will give you an example of uh, how we go about this in uh, Norway. Uh, in, uh, in Norway, indigenizing education refers to both education about the Sami and education for the Sami. Uh, in 2020, a new national, uh, a new curricular reform was implemented, and this new national curricular states that all students are to be educated about the Sami languages and culture throughout primary and secondary school. And now every single school subject now incorporates some explicit Sami learning outcomes. And then additionally, we have a separate Sami curriculum which is commensurate and parallel to this national curriculum. Uh, and this curriculum not only has a distinctive Sami emphasis, but is also designed uh, to prove, pro provide Sami students with an education that is based on Sami values, traditions, ways of teaching and knowing. So in this presentation, we will look at how this uh, curricula came to be and the content of this. 
Uh, I will begin with an introduction on the development of Sami education in Norway, and uh, then we'll explore this uh, curriculum. And uh, finally, we will look at uh, the challenges these uh, updated curricula present for university and teacher educators who are now expected to equip future teachers with a wide range of uh, new perspective and skills in this area. And I think we could say that the bottom line here is that teacher education is the key in, pro in properly indigenizing primary and secondary education. And if we hope to move beyond assimilationist policies and to properly decolonize the education system in Norway, we will have to revisit and reconceptualize the way we train our teachers. Uh, but first, just to kind of situate ourselves, um, you might recognize the map of Europe here. So we are located in the high north in the Sapmere region. It's in the blue here. Uh, Sapmere is the traditional homeland of the Sami. It's uh, located in the northern hemisphere of Norway, Sweden, Finland, and the Kola Peninsula in Norway. Um, hence, we are one people uh, divided by four nation states. Uh, and the Sami are actually the, the only recognized indigenous people in Norway. I am born on uh, the Norwegian side of Sápmi, and this lecture takes the perspective of Sami education in Norway. You might also recognize this map uh, of Norway uh, with Nord universities, campuses, and study locations highlighted. I am currently located in Bodø, the topmost red dot here, uh, and Nord has two main campuses, one in Bode and one in Levanger. And this is relevant in terms of Nord's work with the Sami languages, as I will show you next. Uh, there are 10 distinct uh, Sami languages. Uh, as you can see uh, from the map, five of these belong in Norway. North Sami, the darkest green here, Lule Sami, the lighter green, and South Sami, the bright red one. Is, um, are the biggest of these three. Uh, Pite and Umesami have very few speakers, if any, uh, on the Norwegian side of the border. Uh, if we have the map from the last slide in mind, um, you can see that Bode is in the Lulesami area and Levanger in the South Sami area. Uh, and this is relevant uh, because Nord University has a responsibility for higher education in Lule and South Sami languages. Lule and South Sami, along with Nord Sami, have, uh, are recognized as official languages in Norway alongside Norwegian. And Nord, Sa Nord Sami is uh, by far the biggest of these three languages. Um, it, it's well, it's difficult to count the exact number of speakers, but usually you count around maybe 1, 1,200 Lule Sami speakers and less than 1,000 South Sami. So that means that all Sami languages are endangered, um, with Lule and South Sami being severely endangered. The Sami, as uh, so many indigenous people over the world, uh, have endured centuries of official oppression and forced assimilation. For about 100 years, uh, the official Norwegian policies for the Sami were to assimilate the Sami into the Norwegian society. Uh, in Norway, we call this pornoshni or Norwegianization. Uh, it's a, it was a large number of laws, regulation and policies designed to eliminate the Sami languages and culture. Uh, this uh, Norwegianization policy is, is often tied to two events. You have the lap fund, uh, which was a special item in the national budget established by the Norwegian parliament to, to bring about a change in language and culture, or more loosely translated, uh, to, to prohibit the use of the Sami languages and eliminate the Sami language and culture. On the other side, you got the Alta case around the 1980s. It was a controversy around the building of a dam in the Alta River, and it, has, it became a symbol of the Sami fight against cultural discrimination and racism. And the offici official uh, Norwegianization policy started in school, um, with school as the battlefield and teachers as the frontline soldiers. 
these are strong words, a war metaphor. So it says a lot about the severity of it, doesn't it? The aim of the Lakon was to promote the teaching of Norwegian in school. And over the years, uh, the policy became stricter and stricter. Sami pupils were prohibited to speak Sami also in recess. Um, and the teachers got strict instructions to see to this. For instance, they did not get the raise if they could not document the success in this language shift. And, and this represented a lot of their wage. So it was a strong intensive uh, to take effective, meaning harsh methods in use to, to make this, the, the students uh, talk Norwegian. Uh, with the lab fund, assimilation starts in school, but soon spreads to other areas of society. For instance, law was established that you had to, that said you had to know Norwegian to own land, uh, leading to Sami having to sacrifice the language to buy land. Uh, properties required to have Norwegian names, leading to Sami taking Norwegian last names. Uh, today, uh, many are taking back their old Sami names. Uh, my surname, for instance, Raka is an old sea Sami name that had not been in use for about 50 years before my father took, took it back. And then you had translation of Sami place names or Sami place names were made to like look and sound more Norwegian. So you ended up, you've ended up with a lot of Norwegian sounding names that have been Norwegianized from Sami where they had a meaning like describing a valley, the weather there, etc. You know how indigenous uh, place names usually work. And then you Norwegianized it to becoming something completely gibberish in an effort to, well, make it look more less Sami and more Norwegian. Place names today still uh, ignite a lot of discussion and anger when local Sami names are taken into use again. Uh, this uh, road sign right here is from Kofjord, uh, the municipality of Kofjord in the 90s. Uh, uh, got their Sami name and a Sami road sign to go with it. It raised a lot of anger and debate. And the Sami part of the sign was actually shot at. A couple of decades later, uh, Buda uh, got their Sami name, Bodejua, uh, alongside the Norwegian name. And as you can see, uh, not all were too happy with this either. Uh, but after a long period of harsh assimilation policies, um, in the later half of the 1900s, you saw an increasing amount of culture revitalization. You saw the Sami flag, people started wearing national outfits uh, more visibly, many, many Sami organizations were established at this time. Basically, you saw a Sami nation building. Um, the Alta case was significant. As I said, there was the building controversy about the building of a dam in the Alta River in Finnmark. Uh, there were protests around the construction site, uh, protest camps, had that, demonstration outside the parliament with hunger strikes. Um, the result of it, um, well, the dam was built, but the result was that many became conscious on indigenous rights and the, the situation of the Sami. Um, you could say that the Alta case became like the culmination of an awakening Sami generation's frustration of more than 100 years of Norwegian station. So it led to a total reform of Norwegian Sami politics. So it resulted in the acknowledgement of indigenous rights by the Norwegian state. Uh, in 1987, you saw the Sami Act, which resulted in the Sami parliament. Uh, which is located in Karasok, Karasokka in Finnmark, further up north. Uh, you saw the ratification of the ELO Convention and this in 1990. And in the same year, the Sami Act stated that Norwegian and the Sami languages uh, are equal languages and are to be treated equally. Um, this included uh, the establishment of so-called Sami language management areas. In these areas, it gave citizens the right to use the Sami languages with local authorities or governments. Uh, and this is also relevant for Sami language education, as we will see later. So today, uh, our languages are to a big extent uh, revitalized, they're thriving, 
a lot is in place in terms of rights and of official recognitions of uh, some issues. But under the surface, uh, there are still many unresolved issues. Because, um, you know, it's, it's easier to tear something down than to raising something up. This picture right here, uh, it hangs in a public library head in Buda. And notice uh, that the feet of this man, the sho his shoes, are scraped away. This is because um, he was wearing Gop Maga, uh, a special type of Sami shoes. So this picture says a lot of the effects of the assimilation policies, uh, which resulted in that so many Sami didn't want to acknowledge their heritage. Uh, they abandoned their Sami heritage, generations uh, lost their language. And we can only imagine like to do this, to deny yourself like that, we can only imagine how painful an experience will make a person do this. So I think it's important to have in mind that even though the active assimilation policies are no long abandoned, its ripple effects are still showing and in many ways they're only getting bigger and bigger. Um, there's, for instance, still racism that becomes apparent where, for instance, there are some issues in the media or when, for instance, there are controversies around the uh, wind kraftwerk, around um, the windmills, wind turbines, or mining in uh, in reindeer her reindeer herding areas. So I think it's it's important to have history in mind uh, because, well, even if these assimilationist policies are no more, the consequences are still still very much at play. I would say that. A lot, or if not everything we struggle with today, is a direct result of the past racist policies in terms of education, for instance, the lack of teachers and the lack of teaching materials. Uh, a lot is in place when it comes to education, but yeah, we will still struggle with implementation. And before we go into some education, I just wanted to mention the own ongoing work of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Uh, they started their work in 2018. Uh, it, it was established by the parliament to investigate the Norwegianization policy and injustice against the Sami and the Kven or Norwegian Finns. It was inspired by similar commissions in other countries like the one you've had here in Canada. So the commission has three main tasks, is historical mapping and investigating the impacts of the Norwegianization policy today and proposing measures to enable full and further reconciliation. Uh, their work is due in uh, 2023. So over to education, today's topic. So as we have seen, education has always been an um, or education was an important and central tool in the assimilation of the Sami. And after the official Norwegianization politics, like over the late 1900s, it gradually changes to become an arena to strengthen, uh, develop and protect Sami culture and languages. Uh, so we can say that the school has always been and continues to be uh, a central area for the implementation of the state's policy for the Sami. Uh, the acknowledgement of Sami rights and the recognition of the importance of Sami education uh, it has resulted in a separate Sami curriculum uh, and gradual increase of Sami content in the national curriculum and Sami children having an individual right to receive language education in a Sami language. So some education is based on both international conventions and national laws. So you could say that it, there's a red thread going from these um, international conventions to national law, such as the constitution, which states that the authorities shall create conditions enabling the Sami people to preserve and develop its language, culture, and way of life. You have the Sami Act that states that Sami and Norwegian are equal languages. And the Education Act, which states that all Sami have a right to language education and all students are to learn about the Sami in various subjects. 
Uh, when it comes to this uh, individual right to sound language, language education, the way it works in practice, it depends on whether you live in a language management area or not. Uh, for instance, immersions pro immersion programs or Sami medium education is only given in Sami districts or Sami language management areas. And outside of this, these management areas, you receive language education only in Sami as a single subject. Uh, also, distance teaching is common, especially for South and Lulusami, and especially uh, at secondary level, secondary school level. So uh, this has resulted, as I said, in two curricula, a national one uh, with an increasing Sami content and a Sami curriculum uh, that is based on Sami values, traditions, ways of teaching and knowing. Uh, the Sami curriculum is commensurate and parallel to the Norwegian national curriculum. Uh, it was first in, implemented with the curriculum reform of 1997. And this curriculum is in use in all schools that are within the Sami language management area. As you can see from the map, these are not too many municipalities, um, but there are four of them, them are in the South Sami area. And there's one in the Lule Sami area. Uh, and actually, Bode has recently started the process of becoming the first city municipality to be included in the language management area. Um, the core curriculum, uh, it states uh, the values and principles for primary and secondary education. And this core curriculum is common for both the Sami and the national curricula. Uh, with the new curriculum reform of 2020, it states for the first time that the Sami are an indigenous people. Uh, and it also states that Sami students are to receive education based on Sami values and the Sami languages and culture and societal life. Uh, the core curriculum, curriculum is also clear that the, the Sami cultural heritage is part of Norway's culture, cultural heritage. It reiterates uh, what is stated in the Sami Act, that the Sami languages and Norwegian are equal languages. And again, it states that all students are to gain insight into Sami history, culture and societal life and rights. And I think this, this last uh, part, this last center here, here is significant because it says not only are they to learn about the Sami, but also about the diversity and variation in Sami culture and societal life. So you can say that the core curriculum mirrors and specifies uh, what's stated in the national laws about the preservation and development of Sami language and culture, uh, which again is specified in the specific subject curricula. Uh, for instance, here in the curricula for, for social studies. Uh, this, is, uh, this, this text right here is part of the introductory text of the curricula, which specifies the relevance and the central values of the subject. Uh, in the national curricula, uh, the Sami perspective is expressed as an additional sentence, while the Sami curriculum has a more of a Sami uh, point of departure, saying that uh, the subject shall contribute to developing the pupil's understanding of their individual identity and of the, of the diversified communities we belong to, both inside of and outside of the Sakmi region. Uh, it also specifies, in addition to the minority-majority perspective, that this includes to be compared with other indigenous peoples to understand various power relations and the importance of democratic values. So the Sami curriculum is much, the, the Sami emphasis is much clearer than it is in the national one. Uh, when it comes to competence aims, uh, here in this case, in the case of in this case of year four in social studies, uh, in the national curricula, 
uh, one of 13 of the learning outcomes or competence aims has a specific SAMI content. Uh, in the SAMI curriculum, there are four. And you can see how this differ from the corresponding learning outcomes in the national curriculum. For instance, if you, if you look at the top most, the top, top uh, here, um, the national curricula says you should explore cultural heritage and how people live during the time the cultural heritage is from. Uh, while on the Sami curriculum, you're supposed to explore Sami local history and cultural heritage and how people lived uh, before. Um, so these are the like explicit competence aims. Um, that is competence aims that have an explicit SAMI content. In addition to this, uh, there are competence aims with an implicit SAMI content. Here is an example from the Norwegian subject curriculum after year seven. So you have the explicit uh, competence aim on the left side. It says you're supposed to read SAMI text, et cetera. Uh, on, but on the on the right side here, you have a competence aim where the Sami perspective is implicit. When you say you have, they are to compare the spoken language in the local environment with other vari 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 varieties of spoken language in Norway and with neighboring languages. So here it would be natural to talk about the Sami languages when neighboring languages are mentioned. And for some, the local environment will include a Sami language. So there's this clear expectation from the core curriculum to the subject curriculum that teachers and schools have to include Sami perspectives also beyond what's explicitly stated. Uh, because remember what the core curricula st states about the Sami. Uh, these values uh, are again uh, repeated in the introductory text in the Norwegian subject curricula, although already implicit already here. Uh, and, and, the, and as I said, the competent aims are to be interpreted on the basis of the central values of education as stated here in the core curriculum and the subject introductory sects of subject curriculum. Um, I hope that you now got the, like a, I got a picture of what the two curricula uh, entail and how they look. Um, now uh, I want to talk about the implementation of this curricula, because what we looked at so far is the ideal, and I'm sure that it might look great. Uh, and I'm sure you have the same experience in Canada. What is the ideal? The nice words on paper. It, it's not always the reality. Because in Norway, we have had a separate Sami curriculum since 1997 and an increasing amount of Sami content in the national curricula. So, so how has this been implemented? What has been the experience with this, these curricula? So the evaluation of the reform of 1997 concluded that the schools were not prepared for the major reform that the first Sami curricula presented. Uh, for instance, uh, they lacked both cultural and linguistic competence. Uh, it put teacher in, teachers in an almost impossible situation where on the one side, there, had, there, there was no or little uh, possibilities for systematic competence building. And on the other side, there was very few clear plans on implementation uh, from municipalities um, and schools. So both the local and the central authorities should have ensured that professional competence, resources, and tools for this implementation process were in place. Uh, for instance, there were too few learning materials in place, uh, which is a problem still today. Uh, and this leads to the use of Norwegian learning materials, Norwegian textbooks, which are made based on the national curricula from a Norwegian perspective. Uh, which again makes it difficult to ensure that education for the Sami students are given on the Sami premises, right? So there was not a holistic approach to this. Uh, and it, it seemed like Sami perspectives were only taught when they were explicitly mentioned in, in the subject curricula. So the, so the conclusion from this evaluation was that the reform was full of good intentions, but lacking in implementation. 
Uh, with the curriculum reform, reform of 2006, only the subject curricula were renewed uh, and the core curricula remained the same. Uh, and the conclusion here was the various subject that the various subject curricula did not differ much from those in the national curriculum. So this evaluation found much the same as the previous one. Uh, there were difficulties with implementation due to teaching materials and teacher abilities and, and, and also language situation, because the language situation throughout SAPMI is, so, uh, it's, it's so different from place to place. Uh, so the question remains, how has the curriculum reform the, or to 2020 uh, been implemented? Uh, and, or how do, how, did we, how do we or did we make sure that this new reform did not suffer the same fate as the previous one? Um, the Norwegian scholar Tori Olsen presents three levels of indigenous education uh, or three different strategies uh, in analyzing the amount of content, amount of indigenous content in education. Uh, you got absence, which means, well, well, absence of indigenous perspectives, uh, which was the case in the Norwegianization period and immediately after. Then you got inclusion, which means that uh, Sami per perspectives are included in the curricula, but on Norwegian premises. Uh, this was the case, uh, according to uh, Olsen, uh, for the national curricula in the reforms of both 1997 and 2006. And the third level, indigenization, which would entail that both educating indigenous people based on their own culture and to educate everyone on indigenous perspectives. Um, uh, this was the case for the Sami curricula of the reforms in 1997 and 2006. But as we have seen only in theory, apparently not in implementation, so again, the question remains, how do we ensure that with this new curricula, we see a true indigenous indigenization of education? For the Sami curricula, this would mean that it is an indigenization in practice as well as in theory. And for the national curricula, could we say that, are we still on, in, on an inclusion level? Or is there sufficient Sami content now in the national curricula that it, in, that it entails an indigenization of also mainstream education? Um, I think so, uh, but it all comes down to implementation. So how do we ensure that we don't just indigenize uh, education on paper, but also in practice? And that's where our teacher education comes in. Uh, the way we educate our teachers is the key. I believe properly indig indigenizing education starts here. So in Norway, as we have two curricula, we have two types of teacher education programs, the national and the Sami one. Uh, there are two Sami teacher education programs in, uh, in Norway. Uh, one at the Sami University of Applied Sciences that is located in Finnmark. Uh, it has a pre -dom pre predominantly North Sami focus. And then you have Nord University, which has a South and Lule Sami focus. These are our first five Sami teacher education students at Nord that enrolled in 2018. Yes, they, next year they will graduate and they will present a world of difference to the South and Lula Sami, educa South and Lula Sami societies that sorely lack teachers. So, and um, yeah, and when it comes to Sami perspectives, it's like in the two curricula. Uh, the Sami teacher education has a specific Sami emphasis and but the national edu program is also to include Sami perspectives. Um, but how does this work in practice? Well, it's not without challenges. Uh, the challenges, as I see it, is that the Sami education has to be more than just a copy of the National Teacher Education Program. Otherwise, we will just be at the inclusion level where everything happens on Norwegian premises. Uh, today, it, in my opinion, it's, it's too much of a copy still. There's too little explicit Sami emphasis 
Yes, there are some specific Salome learning outcomes on program levels and in a few of the courses, but especially on program level, it should have been clearer that this is a Salome education and that it's based on Salome values and culture. Uh, the national guidelines for the Salome teacher education are, are actually clear on this because they explicitly state uh, that the Salome teacher education is to be based on Salome culture and society and Salome ways of knowing and learning. Uh, but somehow uh, this is not as explicitly stated in the pro at program level at NUR. Uh, the guidelines, however, say nothing specific about course level or very little spe specific about course level. In fact, they state that the course guidelines for the national teacher education part program are also applicable for the Sami education. And here I must say there's an exception for the courses on Sami language and handcraft and pedagogics. Uh, but otherwise, it's the same guidelines that that is the same course plan. So so no wonder it becomes a copyright when the exact same course line, guidelines are, are the basis for both programs. So to thoroughly indigenize the Sami teacher education, every course in the program should have their own Sami guidelines and course plan. Uh, when it comes to the national teacher education program. Uh, there has to be a uh, specific Sami learning outcomes in the national program on both program and course level. Uh, today, there are only a few Sami learning outcomes in a few courses like Norwegian and pedagogics. Um, and I think if, if there was more explicit Sami content in the various courses, it would be easier to ensure that uh, Sami perspectives becomes a part of our everyday teachings and doing, uh, and not only during Sami week. Uh, Sami week uh, usually centers around the Sami National Day, now in February, it's on Sunday. Uh, and so this week is the so-called Sami week, where a lot of kindergartens, primary and secondary school and higher education include Sami perspectives in their teachings. Uh, it's a great initiative, excuse me. <coughs> it's a great initiative and many do a great job with it also here at the university, but, but we, now we need to take a step forward as a, we need to strive for Sami perspectives to be included in our everyday life, everyday teaching and learning, not just to this one week in the year. That would be, indigenizing education. So how do we at NORD try to meet these challenges? Last year, a working group was set to look at these challenges mentioned above on how to integrate Sami content into every subject and how to ensure that our Sami teacher education program indeed is a Sami program. Um, uh, a report was sent to the faculty leadership, pointing out the need for, well, explicit Sami learning outcomes in every course. And we also proposed ways to ensure that the Sami students do get an education that is based on Sami culture. And not, that it's not just a copy of a Norwegian teacher education. Uh, and this included like setting up for a, a special gatherings for the Sami students uh, several times a year that would focus on Sami perspectives like traditional knowledge, uh, ways of teaching and knowing, and cultural specific perspectives uh, on the various topics in the various courses. Uh, of course, uh, the ideal would be to have a separate Sami course plan or that there were separate Sami courses for the Sami teacher education pro program, uh, but we simply didn't have the teaching resources for this. Uh, we are only two Lula Sami teachers at NOR, uh, and I'm currently working on my PhD and not teaching. So, so this means uh, that we need to be creative. So I think a solution like this uh, could work that, we, that they, the students follow the national teacher educa education programs, but then we need to uh, set measures in place uh, that um, 
that ensure that the Sami perspectives that are supposed to be the foundation of the education. So these, uh, this could be a way to do it. Um, lastly, it is, I think it's, it's so important that the university does not place uh, this undue burden or, on indigenous employees to solve these challenges. It should be an institution-wide responsibility. So we need to ensure that this becomes an institution-wide engagement, that the whole faculty are, see the importance of this and want to work with, it, with integrating this. And to do this, I think it's crucial uh, to give the teaching faculty time and resources to also educate themselves on these uh, Sami perspectives that we are to teach the students. Um, so, so the institution must implement a policy and procedures that avoid tokenism and reduction. There is harm not only in the lack of implementation, but also in improper or insufficient implementation. So to summarize, have we indigenized our education in Norway? Yeah, maybe on paper, not quite there yet. Uh, getting there, although sometimes it feels very like very slowly. So Etna Giedua Motos, thank you so much for uh, for my uh, for my part in Sami. You say thank you for my part. That sounds weird in English, but but thank you uh, for this opportunity to talk to you about uh, tell you about the uh, Sami education. Uh, you have my email here if you have any questions, uh, and I also see that we have quite a few minutes now for questions and discussions if you like to have any questions. Thank you, Sandra, so much. Um, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to unmute your mic and uh, ask, or um, you can put it in the chat. I will stop the recording now so you can have an open discussion. Thank you, James. <laughs>